your name that opens doors and is the key that unlocks hallelujah every good thing that our father has for us hallelujah john chapter 14 verse 13 thank you father when you're there just say amen and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son and if ye shall ask anything in my name i will do it if ye love me keep my commandments and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter and that he may abide with you forever father god i thank you tonight for your word Lord, I thank you for the authority that you have given us, God. I thank you for the redemptive work that you have done on Calvary, God. I thank you tonight that without the shedding of blood that there could be no remission for sins, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that whom the Son has set free is free in, indeed tonight, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that every chain is broken, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that every generational is being, curse is being re, uh, replaced, Lord God, with a generational blessing tonight, God. I thank you, God, that you've given your people power, God, that you've given us the authority, God, to, to tread on serpents and scorpions, Father God. I thank you that you've given us authority right now over the very situation that we're walking through, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that you guaranteed us that if you brought us to it, God, that you will bring us through it, Father. So, Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would open up our eyes and Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you're saying tonight, God. Lord, let the word go forth like seed and let it not return unto you void. But God, let it accomplish that for which you have sent it. Give us a re revelation, illumination, and understanding, Father God, that we know what we believe, but we know why we believe it, Father God. And Lord, we understand that when we understand why we believe what we believe, that we walk into a new power, God, in a new realm. So, Father, I ask you tonight to just not take us to a new level, God, but that you would take us to a new dimension of glory that you said in your word that you want us to take us to because you said you take us from glory to glory so father i ask you right now god just remove every spirit of distraction every hindrance in this place lord god we come against every foul doubting spirit right now in the name of jesus god we tear down every legalistic stronghold god every mindset of wrong tradition and wrong teaching right now god we praise you and we bless you and all god's people said Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God is so awesome. And I, I just have to say, I, I thank God that God never sets us up to fail. God um, is not surprised by anything that we go through. Every one of the battles um, that you are facing right now, God knew was going to happen, and he's not caught off guard. Um, some of you are right now being tested and tried like you've never uh, been tested and tried in your life before, but honestly, uh, God never tests you or gives you a test that he hasn't already given you the information on. The problem with the information that we've been given is that many times it's not become revelation which means it's not become real to you. It's not become part of you. To put it in today's terms, you might know the word, but you don't own the word. And to be effective and to walk in authority, to walk in what it is that God gave you to walk in and what he desires you to have, you have got to own his word. His word has to abide in you, and you have to abide in his word. We understand that when he speaks, that he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. That everything that Christ ever said, from Genesis, from God said, from Genesis to Revelation, it is true. God cannot lie. Are you, are you so thankful tonight that God cannot lie? It's not in his nature. It is not who he is. He cannot lie. So if he has said it, even though I have not seen the manifestation of the promise yet, if he said it, I can know and I can trust in him. My, my soul is anchored in Christ. 
Now, we're, we're, we're on the subject of spiritual authority, and, and I understand that I've been going into things that really doesn't sound like spiritual authority, like what does the armor really have to do with spiritual authority, or praying, what does that have to do with spiritual authority? Well, these are all the tools that God has given us to be able to walk in authority, amen? Um, in church, I believe the information that we've been given, and it's been great information, and there's been, you know... Um, some of it, some of it was misunderstood. Some of it wasn't preached well. But sometimes we get to a point that we have been so churched that we hear phrases and we hear things that they become trite and they become uh, cliches. And so it's important that we understand that, first of all, prayer is like breathing, Sunday I taught about the Lord's Prayer. That's not just a prayer that you pray, but that is an instruction on how to pray. If you uh, weren't here and you want that tape, we've got the tape for you tonight. Um, but today I want to talk about probably um, the most common thing that people say and probably don't give it much thought. And that is I want to talk to you what it means to pray or to say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name is, is truly, it is a key that unlocks every door to blessing. Jesus' name is also the key that locks the door to the enemy having his way into your life. Um, the thing about Jesus' name, you know, what's, what's in his name? And, and when you think about what he said tonight, that if we ask anything, he's telling us, he, he's the, one, it, the, the words are in red, so he's speaking. He says, if you ask anything in my name, the Father is going to do it. And that is such an awesome promise. If God didn't mean it, he would have never said it. You know, I know that when people talk, talk is cheap. But you see, when God talks, it's very expensive because it cost him everything. It cost him his son's life. It cost Jesus his life. So if he loved you that much, he's just not saying nice things. These are promises and they are literal promises promises. Amen? So our problem is not with the promise, but really with the conditions. What does it mean when we say, I pray in Jesus' name? I will tell you right up front, it's a whole lot more than you assume. And I really, I know that this might sound so basic, but it is so important to not only know what you believe, but to know why you believe something. To know why you are saying what you are saying. Because when you can understand why you say what you say, there is a connection between the word and your faith. Because you are believing what you are saying. You are having a moment where you truly understand and the word of God has become like flesh to you. You know how you are when you're secure about something. You know that when, 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 you're, in, when, you're, in the, when you're in a battle or you're in a store, okay, and you're being cheated out of something, when you've got that receipt, when you've got that truth, you know how bold you are. When you know that you are in the right, even the quietest of people are not going to turn around and say, well, that's okay, don't give me what, what's owed me. So God wants you to own his word so that when you speak his word and you know why you're saying his word and why you say in Jesus' name, it's going to make the prayer effective. Again, the Bible says that it's not that we don't pray. Everybody prays. 
Everybody prays differently. But the Bible says it's not that you don't pray. It's that you don't pray like you should. And as I'm praying and as I'm studying, God is revealing to me, you don't pray like you should because you don't understand what you're saying. You don't understand why you're saying what you're saying. You repeat it like a parrot. I mean, after all, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how children learn. When you, when you were little, you learned to speak words and you did it by repetition. You really didn't know what it meant until you were hungry and you learned that I'm hungry, you would get a response. So when children get hungry, they know they're going to get a response. They know that they're going to be fed. So there is a way that they scream and they yell and they ask for food when they're hungry because they expect a response to their demand because they believe in it. Do you understand what I'm telling you tonight? Sometimes our prayers are not effective because we're not believing that God can do what he said that he would do. So many times what happens is we pray in Jesus' name, and many times people think, well, that's just a closing statement. Um, you know, we, 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 hear, we hear amen, and, and we think, okay, it, it's the end of the prayer. It, it's time to, to, to move on. And you always hear in Jesus' name. And it's true that Christians really should always pray in Jesus' name. And we always drop the name of Jesus in our prayers, and we should. But why? And I, and I pray tonight that you will never use his name again without bringing a new revelation to you and a new power. Amen? So let's go by what Jesus, in Jesus' name, what it doesn't mean. Praying in Jesus' name is simply not the end of a prayer. Remember, Sunday night, we, we, when we learned about the Lord's Prayer, the first thing Jesus said, he said, listen, don't be like the Pharisees. Don't go out in public and pray in, 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 in front of people with all these eloquent words so that you can be seen of men. He said, when you pray, you go into your prayer closet. Go into that secret place and you have a conversation with me. And the way you talk to me in secret is the way I'm going to reward you openly. There is a way that we respond to God. If you go back and read all the prayers of the New Testament, not one single prayer ends with the phrase, in Jesus' name, amen. Yet surely, all the prayers that are being offered, according to the promise of our text, that tells us that this promise deals with much more than just saying a few words and then saying amen. For many of us, in Jesus' name, amen, means that the prayer is almost over, and it's time to eat. Or sometimes we think that it's a formula, it's like a spiritual abracadabra, and it's done. But that's what, that's what traditions are. Traditions without purpose is a trap. See, the devil doesn't care that you know the word. He doesn't care that you can recite the word. He's not threatened by that. What he gets threatened and when he starts shaking in his boots, when you really understand. Because there's a certain authority that you have when you understand, when you own something. Okay? There's a difference when I pray, you know, my, my, son, my, my, my son is on drugs, my daughter's on drugs, my husband left me. And, and, and you pray, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bring him back. And Satan, you take your hands off of my child in Jesus' name. Satan does not get affected. But if you say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you take your hands off of my child. You take your hands off of my body because I am a blood-bought child of God. The blood of Jesus is against you. You see, there's a different, see, all of a sudden you respond to it. You're not sleeping on it because all of a sudden you can hear the authority in my voice. Why? Because I'm believing what my God has said. Faith is what activates the word of God and opens up the atmosphere for miracles. 
Jesus' name is not some abracadabra. It is not something that we just say as a formal way to close a prayer. That when we pray, we've got to be confident in what we're praying about. God, I am confident that I don't know how you're going to do this, but I am confident that you're going to bring me out of this. God, I don't know what to do, but Lord, I know that you're not a God of confusion. See, I'm declaring who he is. When I declare who he is, there's a faith attached to it. And it gives me the authority. If you own something, if you have authority, you act like you have authority. If I got behind the pulpit and I was shy like this and I said, well, you know, maybe God's going to answer. No, I wouldn't be effective, but I'm effective. Why? Because I've lived what I preach. I can tell you that I know that God is a healer. Why? Because he's healed my body. I can tell you that God works financial miracles and he provides for your every need. Even if it is at the midnight hour, God will always come through. God will always supply your need. I can also tell you that God will never do it the way you think he's going to do it. I can also tell you that you've got to learn how to wait on God. Amen? Those things never get a big amen, but amen. Okay. Here's, here's the thing. We got to learn how to pray in Jesus' name and also pray um, according to the will of God. Okay? Which means, if I pray tonight... And I said, Lord, in Jesus' name, everybody's going to wake up tomorrow morning and there's going to be a million dollars in your mailbox. Everybody's going to jump. Everybody's going to shout, yeah, 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 in Jesus' name. But guess what? God didn't tell me that. So what you're doing is you're not praying in Jesus' name. You're praying in Karen's name. And that's not going to get you anywhere except an empty mailbox. <laughs> Amen? So when we pray... We've got to make sure that we're praying in God's will. And that's why stepping out, when people say, you need to step out in faith. Stepping out on faith is stepping out on a word from God, not just a want in your spirit. But he gives you the desires of your heart. Yes, he gives you the desires of your heart when your heart lines up with his heart. Because not every desire that you and I desire is good for us. Not everything. Thank God that God didn't let that person be attracted to you. Sometimes God, you know, you desire a position. But what happens if God gives you that position at that job and you are not ready for that position? What if he puts you in leadership? He puts you in, 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 in leadership of an entire company, and yet you've never even understood how to run a department. It's not to say that you won't be the CEO of that company, but everybody learns. Garth Brooks said it best. Some of God's greatest answers are unanswered prayers. Because sometimes our desires... And, and listen, not every desire is a bad desire. But you don't know everything. You might have right promise, wrong person. Right promise, right per person, wrong time. You might want this promise and you're over here. But God says in order for you to have that, You've got to walk through this and that because this thing over here is so much bigger than what you could ask, think, or imagine. So when I pray in Jesus' name, I also have to pray in, in the Spirit and in God's will. Now, why are names so significant? And I've taught this before, but it always, it always pays to remind us. 
Today it's not as significant because we can be named Bill, George, Tom, Carol. We don't really pick names that ascribe certain natures. Most of the time today when, when, we, when we name children, it's always after my grandfather, my father, my mother, um, or we like the name or we'll, you know, and we think long and hard about the names. I know when, I mean, we had the last name Waldvogel. And, you know, that's a hard name for little kids to say. It means forest bird, big bird. Yes, I married big bird. Um, <laughs> and, and so um, when we picked names, one of the things my husband and I did was we went through every single name and we tried to make fun of them. We made fun of every single name and we tried to think about what, what would happen. Because I mean, sometimes I hear people naming, especially movie stars, you know, did you ever think that maybe this child one day has got to go before a boardroom of people? And I'm, you know, and it, and, and I, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's just crazy. So names, names are important. Names in the Bible, when people would pick out names for the Bible, it always um, described a nature of someone. Um, when, when you, when you ask about um, Jacob, his, his name meant, you know, cheater or deceiver. Nabal means fool. Peter means rock. So what does the name Jesus mean? Why was he named Jesus? First of all, of all the names that God could have picked, why name him Jesus? Um, Lord, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord means master. Jesus means savior. And Christ means the anointed one sent from God. So when you call out to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're calling out to my master, my savior, the anointed one who is sent from God. All of a sudden, his name just isn't Jesus. His name is signifying who he is. It doesn't just, I mean, when God says, listen, when he, remember he spoke to Moses, he said, I am. That's my name. I am that I am. I am, I, I am Jehovah. I, I, am, I am the eternal creator. I am El Shaddai. I am the God of more than enough. God describes himself and his nature through his names. We also see that names also reveal who God is and what he does. He's Jehovah Jireh, what does he do? He's my provider. He's Jehovah Rapha, he's my healer. That's why it's important to know the name of God so that when you pray, you know what face of God that you're speaking to. Because when you need him to show up as Jehovah Jireh, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh. God, I know that you're my provider. Lord, just as you sent the ram in the bush as the substitute for Isaac, Father God, I know, Lord, that you will provide for me because you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You see, when we pray, we pray the word of God, not just what we want, but when we, you see, here it is. It's not about God being on an ego trip. And so God needs to be reminded who he is. He has, no, he has no amnesia. He's got no problem knowing who he is. I mean, when somebody puts in the book, he says, when I didn't have anybody to swear by, you know, I swore by myself. God is not in an identity crisis. But when we go back to God and we start declaring his name and who he is, He's understanding that you're understanding and you're walking in an authority because now you understand that I am an heir and a joint heir with Christ. That now, because of your son Christ, everything that he can do, I can do. Everything that he said, his name is what opens the door to my blessing. So I'm walking in the authority. I'm walking in an authority that God has given me. We see the principle um, with David and Goliath. Just before the battle begins, David boldly tells Goliath where his power is coming from. Now understand, a lot of times when people talk about spiritual authority, 
we think we can just walk in and just start quoting scripture and bing, bang, boom, it's going to happen. That's where sometimes I personally have heard the kingdom message get, get, get preached in a way that is so unbalanced that people start to think that they are mini gods. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I do not walk, the whole reason for the armor, I do not walk in my own armor. I have to put the breastplate of righteousness on. Why? Because it's Christ righteousness that's imputed to me. I can't do it on my own. That's why he says you need to put on the mind of Christ. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. So that when you come into battle, you are fit and you are dressed for battle. So David, he's saying, he says to Goliath, he says to him, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel. David was saying to Goliath, I'm not coming to you in my own strength. I'm not coming to you, you know, because I'm angry, because I don't like what you're doing. I am coming in the authority and in the name of my God who gave me the strength and the strategy to be able to defeat you. When I understand who I am and who he is, that he's big and he's everything, and I'm nothing. Then I can start to understand, but because I'm in him, and I, my, his word abides in me, and, 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 the, and, and I abide in him, we are one. That now I can do what my father tells me to do, because if it lines up with his word, I can walk boldly into, my, into the devil's playground or, or whatever he's trying to do. I go into the enemy's camp, as they say, and I can take back what he's stolen. Why? Not in my own power, but in the power that worketh within me. For he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or marry, according to the power that worketh in us. So there is a power that God has already vested in you. Jesus said, I've given you the power to tread upon scorpions and, 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 and all that stuff and, and, and everything now is under your feet. I've given you the authority so that when we come and we understand that his name, it brings authority. That I am not here by my own will. I am not here in my own power, but I am here in the power and the authority of the God who called me, who chose me, who anointed me, and who appointed me. And when I understand that, that's when I can put my shoulders back because I'm not bringing glory to myself but I'm bringing glory to my Father. Can you say amen? Uh, third, the, the, the names represent a person's reputation. Uh, we see clearly in the reference to the name of the Lord, the very first petition, the Lord's Prayer, is hallowed be thy name. To hallow something is to treat it with great worth and respect. You hallow God's name when you, when, you, when you treat it, when you honor it with the respect that it deserves. It's holy. It's sacred. That's why Jesus says, he said, when you pray, you pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, you sit in heaven and you are holy and you are worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. God, there is nobody above you and there's nobody beside you. The name of Jesus is a matchless name. It, it, it states his reputation. To pray in Jesus' name is based solely on who he is with his authority in order that his reputation might be enhanced in the world. Amen? But his name is what unlocks doors. Not your name and not my name. So let me, let me say it like this. If, if, I, asked, um, if I asked for a million dollars... 
and unmarked bills, and I put them in suitcases, okay, if I go to the bank and I ask them for that, they're going to start laughing at me. Are you kidding me? Who, who are you? They won't give you $5. But if I showed up to the bank and I had a check for a million dollars and Donald Trump or Bill Gates signed that check, I can walk into the bank, they'll look at the signature, they'll look at the name. Bill Gates signed this for you? Well, I understand he's got money. He's got power. Therefore, they'll give me, they'll give me the money. Why? Because I walked in the name of Bill Gates. Because I had his signature. I can't just demand what I want. I'll never forget, I, I think I've told this story many times, but um, I had a friend, and they had a daughter, and the daughter was getting ready to drive a car, and, and the mother, she was a single mother, um, was struggling financially, and they, they needed a car. And this preacher calls this 17-year-old, and I will say it, child, um, calls her out and says, I want you, when you leave church today, you're going to go to the car dealership, Mercedes car dealership, and you're going to pick out the most expensive car. And I want you to lay hands on that thing, and I want you to pray, and it's going to be yours in Jesus' name. Well, the mother of this daughter is looking at me, and I'm looking at her, and she's like, you're going to fix this when we get out of here, aren't you? Because there's a difference between speaking life and speaking what God literally says. Amen? Because things have got to line up with the word. Now, is it possible that she could have gone to the Mercedes dealer? Could the salesman have come out and said, I had a dream about you and God spoke to me about you and give you the car? Anything is possible with God. I mean, we've heard, we've heard miracles like that. But the problem was, was teaching her a principle that you can ask whatever you want and say in Jesus' name and think that it's going to happen. And you see, when we don't understand how, what the conditions of the promise, it's how the enemy then comes in and starts messing with your head and starts spending, sending disappointment and discouragement on you. Because sometimes we get so upset when God doesn't do what we told him to do. And I say it that way because, yes, we've come in with authority and we've demanded something from God. But what we've demanded from him may not have been in his will. And God doesn't have to do what we say. God has to do what he says. And he said, notice when he says, anything that you ask in my name, the Father will give, it you, give you. But then right after that, he says, but you have to keep my commandments. You have to keep my commandments. You know, we live in a society today where it is, how, how did you say it? it, it it's, a, it's a river of, of giving, and it's an ocean of taking. Think about it. And, and today we live in, in a society that just get it any way you can get it. You go into the corporate world, the corporate world, everybody is stepping on the person in front of them to just get higher and higher and higher and higher. There's, 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 there's not a whole lot of integrity being preached. There, there's, there's not a whole lot of character being lived. Everybody just get what you need to get. And so what happens is, is when you begin to align yourself, this is why every blessing is birthed out of your personal relationship with God. Because here's the thing. 
when I get into my secret place with God and I begin to pray and I begin to seek his face, he speaks. Now, that's a problem because some people say, well, I don't hear nothing. The problem that you're not hearing anything is not because he's not speaking. It's because you're not listening. And you see, when you allow God, we sang that song tonight, I surrender all. When I surrender everything to God, when I learn how to say, Father God, not my will, but yours be done. God, I want to walk in your plan. God, I don't want to be what people want me to be or what they need me to be. God, I want to be what you have called me to be. When you learn how to quiet yourself and begin to really listen to God, he, he speaks. And sometimes, sometimes you can hear him audibly. Sometimes he'll just impress something so deep in your heart. Sometimes you'll read the word of God and God will speak to you in a way that he will give you a direction. God is, God is not the... He doesn't talk in paragraphs, but he also doesn't leave you alone and never speaks to you and never shows you forever and ever and ever. Sometimes there's moments and seasons where it appears that God is silent, but even if he's silent, it's not that he's not working. He might be saying, just hold on, baby. I can't answer that right now because I'm in the middle of working this out for you. Sometimes God says, listen, I'm planning something. You ever see maybe a house or a car we were talking about earlier today? Something that you saw three or four years ago and you said, hmm, nice place. Nice place. Wrong time. But yet, it's hidden inside. And so now, all of a sudden, you get to a place where the need comes. That's why if you're in relationship with him and you're praying every day and you're seeking God, you'll be able to hear now. You'll be able to recognize when God all of a sudden sends a divine connection into your path. Because understand, blessings come through people. They come through connections. And that's why God says, listen, you need to be vigilant and you need to be sober and you need to be the watchman on the wall. You've got to hide my word in your heart so that in the times where you don't know what to do, you can silence yourself enough to hear the word of God and to recognize that sometimes if God doesn't say something, God will always speak in peace. God will never, ever, ever move in fear. Even if he warns you about something that is to come, when it's God, there is always a peace that is attached to it. So when we think about, you know, what's in a name, names are important. You know, we used to see in the, when, when people get arrested, what do they say? They say, freeze in the name of the Lord. Of the law. In the name of the Lord, you can say that too. But they'll say, stop in the name of the law. You've been caught. You cannot break the law. There is power and there is authority in those words. That's why we need to understand when we're saying in Jesus' name, it is not just something we say that is a ritual. But it's in Jesus' name, it gives the prayer effectiveness. Your prayers will not be answered if you don't have the faith to back it up. And that's not to punish you, but that is God's way of drawing you. He's drawing you closer he wants you to know. He wants you to trust him. That's why the Bible says to count it all joy when you fall into various trials. 
and different things that come across your life. Because when you get into a situation that you can't get yourself out of, that your own name is not going to get you out of, that you understand there is only but one name. There is only one way. And Jesus is the name, and he is the way, and he is the truth, and he is the life. God allows you to go through certain obstacles in your life because he reveals who he is. He reveals what he does. If I had never been attacked in my body on several occasions in my life, how could I really get up here and say that God is a healer with the confidence that I have? I've experienced it. I've walked in that power. I've walked in that authority. So I could tell you, he gives you the authority. He gives you the power to do it. But I also have to go into the word of God and understand what has God given me the authority and the power to do. Why does God give us spiritual authority? The reason that he gives us authority is for one reason and one reason alone. It is to bring glory to the Father. Not glory to ourselves. God just doesn't bless people. I mean, he brings the, nest, the, the need and he brings the luxury. But if you're praying for a blessing because you just want a lot of money, because you want to live a good life, that's not necessarily an effective prayer. But when you pray scripture, God bless me that I could be a blessing. Well, then God starts to hear, okay, that's my child talking. Because my child is, is, is walking in, in what, in what I've, I've told them. I, I told my kids all the time, you remember when you walk outside this house, who and what you represent. Remember who you represent. You remember that when, when one fall, we all fall. When one succeeds, we all succeed. Because our name, you know, it's a good thing to have a good name. The Bible says that. So we, we, we walk we walk in the authority that God um, has, has said. So we need to be careful that we use his name in the proper way. What would happen if I took your checkbook, I wrote myself out a check, and I signed your name? I would go to jail because it's forgery. So that's why when we pray, we pray Jesus' will. We pray God's will. And if we humble ourselves and we quiet ourselves and get ourselves before God, God will reveal his will to our lives. Because God wants you to succeed. God does not, and I don't know who this is for, but God doesn't want you to do guesswork. God wants you to sit. God wants you to listen. And God wants you to obey. God does not want you to be unhappy in your situation, want to change it, and you don't like how long he's taking or the path that he's choosing to take you on. You don't get to change the plan and say, this is God. Because that's forgery. You understand what I'm saying? I can't, I can't force myself. I can't force myself. You know what? I want to go out and do another record. I can't step out in faith and do another record until God says, okay, now is the time to take the faith and do it. Can't do that. Because if I step out on my own will and my own want, my desire, even though my desire is a good desire, nothing wrong with it. If God has not said it, then I can't step out on it. Many people said, you know, you're just afraid. That's why you don't have your own building. You no, no, no. I don't have my own building because God has not said it's time for me to have my building. Because there are certain things that God has told me about a season that is yet to come in my life. When it's coming, I have no idea. But there are certain things that God has spoken to me, that until I see certain things, 
I'm just faithful. And this might help somebody out too. If you're in a place, and I know you don't want to hear this, but let him who has an ear, you need to hear this. If you're in a place where you're frustrated and you think you should be further along than you are, and you're praying and you're praying and you're praying and you're asking God, and God seemingly is saying nothing, you need to understand how to interpret the silence of God. The silence of God sometimes is just telling you, keep doing what you're doing. And don't grow weary in well-doing. I hear that verse and I go, it's not one that I jump and shout over because it's a difficult one. But it's one that will save your life. Amen? So, what does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? When you pray in Jesus' name, you are confessing your faith that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Hebrews 10, 19, and 20 tells us that we now have confidence, that, and that's the Greek word that means boldness or freedom, to come into the very presence of God by virtue of the blood of Jesus. By the offering of his own body, he has made a way past the veil into the throne room of God. Remember in the Old Testament, there was that really thick curtain in the temple. When Christ died, that, that temple was represented that nobody could go past. The Holy of Holies was back there. Only one person, the high priest, could get back there. When Christ died, that veil was made rent. And God tells us that now, because of Jesus' name, by the blood that Jesus shed, and this is why it's so bad when the churches are not preaching the blood of Jesus, because if you don't preach the blood, you have no power. You're not preaching about the name of Jesus and, and why you use his name and what his name means. You're not walking in power. Because it was because of the blood that we're allowed to use his name. So now, because of the name of Jesus, that when we pray in the name of Jesus, I can walk boldly into my prayer closet. I can go right to the throne of God and I can say, Father God, I love you. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, however you acknowledge God. And I can begin to speak to my Father. I can begin to worship him and to praise him. I don't need a middleman. Guess what? You don't need your pastor to get into the presence of God. You don't need a worship leader to bring you into the presence of God. You should be having even better worship services by yourself than you're having here. And when we come together, it should just be like a big praise party because when everybody's prayed up and in the spirit, listen, if you haven't noticed, but there's been such a shift in our worship over the past six months. Why? Because people can't wait to get to church for the worship. Why? Because I'm beginning to realize there's a certain understanding and a revelation that people are getting about the worship. Because for a long time, it was treated like that's the stuff before the word. But people are understanding there's something about my life that changes when I begin to worship. Now when I begin to worship, my heart is getting prepared. And I'm able to understand that what the pastor is saying even more than I've ever understood it before. Why? Because you're getting a connection. Because God is speaking. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we are allowed to go boldly into the throne of God. Um, number two, when we pray in Jesus name, we are acknowledging that his name is the supreme name and in the universe and in the universe, there is no other name greater than his name. Philippians 2, 9 and 11, it says, is, is very clear on this point. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at that name of Jesus Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not just a lyric in a song. He says, I have given you this name. 
This name is matchless. This name, it literally is the key that unlocks the blessing and the key that locks the enemy up. It is his name. By virtue of his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, God has exalted him to the very highest place in the universe. His name is great. There is no other name. There is no other name that has power other than Jesus. And think about it. He's given you his name. By the spirit of adoption, we cry out, Abba, Father. It is so important that people have a name. You have a name, and, and you have a family name, because people who don't belong to a family, when people don't know, I don't even know what my, you hear about people that were adopted, and given away, they don't have a name, they don't know who they belong to. They, they, they walk around and it's very hard, they go through years of therapy having an identity crisis because they don't know who they belong to. And God is saying, you're no longer strangers. You're no longer orphans, you're no longer slaves. But now, you're my child and I have given you my name. Listen, think about it. When people set up their wills and they have their estates, it's set up with my mom that everything that's got her name, because I've got, I've got her name, everything she has, I'm entitled to it. I'm not entitled to your stuff. I don't have your name. But I've been given the name of Jesus that gives me the authority to walk on water. It gives me the authority to claim healing in my body, to claim provision. Why? Because I've never seen his righteousness, the righteous forsaken, or his seed begging for bread. I'm a child of God because he is my father. I am not an orphan. And God says, I have never seen one of my children, one of my children walking around begging for stuff. That's why what Jesus said, when you pray, give us, Lord, our daily bread. Sometimes God doesn't give us excess because he's saying, if I gave you excess, I know that I wouldn't hear from you until, the, until, until you needed me again. That hurts, but that's the truth. Number three, when you pray in Jesus' name, you are admitting that there is no power to answer your prayers in any other name, including your own. See, God is a big one about his glory. God will share everything he's got, but God is not going to share his glory. And sometimes, you know, I think because in, in an effort to make God so real, and yes, he comes down at your level, and yes, he will meet you where you're at, and yes, we can come boldly to the throne just as we are, not our representative. But we can never make God common. He still deserves honor. He still deserves all the glory, honor, and praise. You know, if you pray those prayers, you went to your prayer closet and you prayed the prayers in your own name, they will be of no effect whatsoever. I mean, try it. Your name isn't going to get you anywhere, but when you pray in Jesus' name, you're declaring, God, you can do something that I can't do. And that's what that song, I Surrender All, is about. It's saying, God, I can't do anything. All the education I have, all the money I have, all the know-how, all the gifting, all the talent, all the anointing, I can't do anything without you doing it through me. And that's another reason why so many times our prayers get hindered. Because we are not allowing God to have full control. We've got too many Ishmaels in our life because we are moving outside of the will of God because we've become impatient with God's process. Or because we have to walk through something that yes, it is painful. 
something I would rather not walk in. But God says, are you willing to wait on me? Are you willing to trust me? Number four, when you pray in Jesus' name, you are submitting your will to his will because he knows what is best. You know, right after, um, a few hours after Jesus records this promise, he finds himself in Gethsemane. And he starts praying, Father God, if there be another way, if there be another way, Let's, 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 let's do another way. But then he says, nevertheless. Nevertheless. I think it's amazing the timing of where this scripture is. He's saying, God, but it's not about my will. It's about your will being done. And sometimes we rush into our prayer closets, and it's daddy, 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 daddy. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me what I want. Give me. And when God is not answering our prayers as fast as we want him to, we become spoiled. And instead of repenting and asking God to help us to say, not my will, because that's a hard thing to say. It, it is not easy, okay, to, and that's why I want to lift off condemnation off of anybody. It's not an easy thing to say, Lord, I, I, I literally, I surrender all. I, I, give you, I give you everything because we like our control. It's our flesh nature. It's, it's, it's what's in us. It's that human thing, you know, but it has to die, okay? But we understand that it's, it's not, I mean, it was not easy for Jesus to say this. He knew what was coming. And he was so, you know, in the moment, um, I, I, I don't know if this, you know, can we please... Can we please find a different way? Not excuse me, because I know i got to have my blood shed, but is there another way to do this? Because this is really radical. And what happens is when we rush ahead of God, when we try to make something happen. I preached a sermon a couple of years ago. And I preached, you know, you, it was about stepping out in faith, and it was about giving God something to work with. And... There were, there were some people that took it the wrong way. And it's, okay, I'm going to give God something to work with because I need this breakthrough in my life. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And they step out and they do crazy stuff because I'm giving God something to work with. But wait a minute, you missed the whole first half of the message. You got to know that what you're asking God for, he said it. See, my example in the sermon was, I desperately needed a laptop computer. Because I was traveling, and that was when we didn't have email on phone and all that. And at that point, I needed a laptop. I did not have the money for a laptop. So I was praying, I was praying, told Janine I needed a laptop, and she came to me and she said, Karen, she said, I don't have the money to give you for a laptop. She said, but what I can do, I bought you the case. I bought you the case. She brought me the case, it was this pretty hot pink case, and we laid hands on it, and we said, God, this is what we could do. So now God, in your time, in your will, you fill it. Well, the laptop came within a week. Somebody donated it to the ministry. But you have to understand something. God spoke it to her. She wasn't moving in her own will. I didn't turn around and say, I need a laptop so bad that I'm going to step out and charge this thing. And then, ex you know, and listen, sometimes that might be the way that God moves. But what I am telling you is that stepping out on faith means stepping out on a word and taking a step and giving God something to work with that doesn't try to force his hand in making what you're believing come to pass. Does that make sense? Okay, because I just want everybody to be clear. Because so many times people say, well, I stepped out on faith and did this. 
And I'll say, did God tell you to take that step? Because the one thing I've noticed about prayer and authority, every day Jesus got with his father. Now he was fully human and fully divine. But he still got with his father and he consulted him on every miracle he was going to do, every sermon he was going to preach, where he had to go, what he had to do. Jesus himself didn't move in his own authority, his own want, and his own desire. He said, everything I speak, everything I do, I am being told by my Father. Faith is radical, but faith also is obedience and when God tells you to do something. You can't write out a check for something and just, it'll be there by the time it gets there. Unless God has spoken to your heart and has told you to do that. Amen? But so many people will wreck their lives and make major mistakes because they rush too fast. Because I'm giving you something, God, to work with. And basically what you're telling God I'm telling you what to do. So maybe if I get the ball rolling, it's going to make God move even faster. Not going to happen, okay? You heard it from me. You heard it from me. (laughs) You try it. It's it's not going to work. So when you pray in Jesus' name, you are submitting your will to him. Number five, when you pray in Jesus' name, you're asking that God's reputation be enhanced through the answer to your prayer. God does not want us to be all about ourselves. God made the covenant with Abraham, and when he made it with Abraham, he makes it with us. He said, you will be blessed to be a blessing. When God gives you something, he is not giving you something for you to just hold on to it for yourself. God is giving you something, whether it be monetarily, whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically. Listen, God heals your body. He gives you that healing so that you would get up and testify and and let somebody else know that if you, if God healed my body, then God can heal your body too. It was why when I was going through the mastectomy, I so wanted to do it in private. I I really, I mean, I was trying to finagle every way that when we closed down in August, I thought, let me try to get it done in August and I could do it in two weeks and nobody would really ever know the difference. Can I do it all in one shot? And God says, no. No. This is something that you're going to walk through. You're going to walk through it publicly because I want people to know something. Because there's a message in this mess. And you are going to bring glory to my name through it. You don't go through what you go through so you can sit on it and you can just have a a praise fest all by yourself. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's why I encourage you that when God has done something, when he's touched your life, when he spoke something to your spirit, when he's given you something to open up your mouth and give him praise and give your testimony because your testimony can save someone else's life. Because there's someone who's struggling with a disease And a problem that they can't find any way out. And at least if they're not a jealous hater, they'll get excited and say, okay, okay, he did it for you. He'll do it for me. I'm I'm next. It gives hope. Now, there are all those people that when they hear good news from other people, you, you know, that they're getting some that they want. And here's a little word to the wise. It's one thing when you hear somebody getting what you want and you can say, God, when is it my turn over that's it? You did it for them and you didn't do it for me? God, you, okay, here's another thing. You got you to gotta check your heart. But God is not going to bless a hater. 
he will bench you. And he will, not that he won't eventually bless you, but you are delaying your miracle by hating someone who has what you want. And every time, and see, this is why when people don't understand the word of God, this is how their relationship with God breaks because my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Because to be jealous of someone is completely satanic because what you're telling God is what you've given me is not enough. And there's not a person that if you saw God face to face that you would have the chutzpah to tell him that. But you know what? It's in your spirit. And if you understood the word of God, you would understand that he doesn't bless people who hate. You understand that it blocks your blessing. The Bible says that we mourn with those who mourn and we rejoice with those who rejoice. He is El, see if you understand that he is El Shaddai, he's the God of more than enough. There's a more, there's, there's more than enough blessings to go around. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the whole earth. He owns it all. So there's enough for you. There's enough for me. There's enough for everybody. And then there's still more after that. And so our prayers get blocked and they get hindered because we are secretly jealous. And I will tell you that before God is just about to bless you with something, he will parade what it is that you want and you need right in front of you. And when you, your response is anger and jealousy, and I'm not talking that, okay, God, I'm happy, but Lord, I'm struggling too, so, but there's a way. All I'm saying, God, God understands the individual and he understands the heart. But when God parades, it's a test. Oh, people, please learn the signs of the test. Because the moment that you react in hate and jealousy, God says, sorry, baby, you're not ready yet. Sit down. Let me learn this. We got to go through this lesson again. Because that's another thing with God. He doesn't let you skip the test. You don't graduate until you Walk through and you get the diploma. And finally, number six, when you pray in Jesus' name, you are asking that everything you ask for be consistent with God's character, God's will, and God's word. Remember, praying the will of God is so important. How do I know the will of God in my life? Because you're on your face before him. You're reading his word. To know his word, you're understanding his nature. You're seeing who he is. You're seeing what he does. You're seeing what he's promised you. You can't claim someone else's husband or someone else's wife. Can't do that. Why? Because God says, you know, you're not supposed to commit adultery. Oh, yeah, but their marriage is falling apart. Well, you know what? Sorry. Can't do that. Can't covet what somebody else has. God gave you those laws. And listen, Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. The only way that the law could be fulfilled is through grace. Hello, here I am. I am mercy. So here's the thing about using Jesus' name. You can't lie or steal in Jesus' name. You can't ask God to bless adultery in Jesus' name. You can't ask God to bless your sin in Jesus' name. You can't swear in Jesus' name. And you can't ask God to bless your rage in Jesus' name. That when we pray 
And we ask in Jesus' name, he'll do it. But he says, but you have to keep my commandments. You've got to learn how to walk in love. You've got to learn because here's the thing. Obedience releases the favor that you need. And sometimes when you're going through something, God challenges your integrity. He challenges your character. Why? To make you strong. So that whatever flesh is in there, it's being burnt up and it's being consumed. We go through the fire. And when we go through the fire, it's all the dross. It's all the stuff that doesn't belong there. That's what gets burnt off. And then we come out as pure as gold. Because there's some things that need to burn that we don't need. So when you pray in Jesus' name, you come into it with his desires, with his will, according to his word. You know, we, we've all heard that, what would Jesus do? Well, I think that's a good way to live. Every time I react, I mean, it sounds so simple, but every time I react, every time I do something, every time I get into a situation, what would Jesus do? Well, when I get in my prayer closet, how would Jesus pray? How would Jesus pray about this circumstance? You know, I'm being, I'm being persecuted right now, and, and this one hurt me, and that one hurt me. How would Jesus pray? Well, Jesus would say, forgive us our debts as we forgive those that have debts against us. But Lord, you don't understand. I'm so angry with this person. They don't deserve forgiveness. They, they've been mean and rotten and cruel. So Father, help me. Create in me a clean heart. Help me release these people because I understand Forgiveness is supernatural. It is not something that anybody can do in your own strength. It takes a supernatural act of God to be able to have someone hurt you and violate you. And then to be able to forgive that person and be able to embrace them. I know because it's happened to me. Couldn't do it myself. See, but there's one thing about being real with Jesus. He already knows all the stuff that's there. He already knows it. You, you try to hide it. You try to pretend that it's not there. You try to impress him. But he knows it's there. But one thing God responds to is when you genuinely come to him and say to him, you know what, God? I'm getting this all wrong. I'm struggling with this. I'm jealous. I'm angry. I'm being mean. I'm starting to spew. I'm starting to blow up. I'm just not right in my head. I'm just not right in my heart. I need you to touch me. Because the bottom line, God, I want my relationship back with you. That when we begin to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and his righteousness means to do all that he said, to be all that he is. That's why he says, I've given you the authority. I've given you my name so that you can walk in my righteousness. Because nothing of yours is good enough. He gives you his name so that you have that connection, so that you have that key. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You guys are so quiet. So now, from now on, we're going to get ready to take our offering tonight. But I want you to really, and again, this is so elementary. But I want you to start really understanding what you believe, why you believe it. Start studying the names of God. Go in the Word. Go in the Word and find every name that is ascribed to him. There's a beautiful poster somewhere that has all the names of God. That if you even just go there and then just start to search in the Bible or we'll see where the verses are. You'll start to know who he is. And when you know who he is and you know what he does, you'll know, that you'll know what his desires are and what they're not. To be able to walk in his word and carry. When we pray according to God's word. That's why how do you pray if you don't know the scriptures? 
So if you're struggling financially, find all the scriptures that have to do with sowing and reaping and finances. Take them, study them, know them, but have faith in them. Have faith in it and see what God does. Amen. Well, I'm excited. October is rolling around very, very quickly, although it does not.